start. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us here on the session. Um, we'll go through a brief introduction about uh, uh, each of us, and then we'll kickstart the panel here. Well, um, and, uh, the topic here, again, uh, we were thinking is because of the trend today. Uh, which is no longer the trend anymore. I think everybody is overwhelmed with uh, the social media or the news or the email campaigns that you might have been receiving through all sorts of uh, from our own industry, but also, okay, now we are live. I got a notification. <laughs> so that was confusing. All right, I'll kick start. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Pranit Patlola. Before we go into introductions, uh, I just want to make sure people can see us hear us um i put a message just in case anybody has any difficulty not seeing us and hear us give us a heads up um thank, thank thanks a lot well uh thanks a lot for joining here the session i think uh you know every time jan puts us on an amazing show i've been i think this is like the third time part of this um and i always thought why do this but you know every time i come into the sessions and uh, going into all the other sessions today every time i come this uh, i'm always amazed by the insights we actually gain from uh, each people individuals and their research they do uh, what they're working on what's coming later so there's a lot of insight so i'm always uh, curious always to join uh, the whole staffing event anywhere i am the world i will always log in uh, either participate or speak so again, thanks a lot for uh, setting this channel, Jan. Uh, let me kick this off. We're going to talk about generative AI. <laughs> uh, nothing new about it because now it has become the most common term, uh, although it, the lines are a little blurred around what it really means for what purpose. But I think you know we have. We, it looks like 2023 gave us a really good boost. Everybody probably has had got a hands on or tested or asked a question about uh, something to chatbots. Uh, especially uh, OpenAI or even any other chatbots, where it probably gave you the right answer or an answer which you thought was funny <laughs> enough to move forward. <laughs> but you know, I, I think the the world is maturing so fast. And uh, like I was reading something, and a keyword I would like to borrow from the media is like tectonic shift. Uh, I think we are in this cusp of a tectonic shift in the technology of adoption, and it's more applicable to the software enablement. And given that as an industry who we are, we've always been looking for things, how we can optimize our own jobs on or the life cycle of an industry from sourcing or identifying the need to source, which is the requirement itself from hiring managers or the company to how we source and how effectively can we source. But part of the sourcing, how do you reach out? How do we effectively reach out? How do we reach out and then qualify candidates, inbound, outbound, uh, a lot more approaches, but also qualifying and screening that has become an important approach of our industry today, while it was not a couple of years ago. Uh, and going forward, I think all this coming together into software enablement will make us so efficient because the key metrics we all chase every day as an industry people is, you know, time to submit, time to respond, time to hire, ensuring you touched every candidate in your the applicant pool, ensuring you're running in the most optimized campaign, building digital relationships in today's world, and enabling all this kind of other topics. But we'll try to figure out how to summarize this into a more of a shorter form. And we figured out it would be fun to actually just talk, debate, and I'll uh, and also keep it open because I'll also watch out the chat here to make sure we pick up comments and questions and bring it up here and speak about it. Well, with that, um, thanks a lot uh, uh, here at the panel who are. Uh, some amazing uh, brains and minds of our industry who has several years of experience. So let me do a quick around, round table here from introducing myself. My name is Pranit Patrola. I call myself still as a developer because I do write code. I wrote uh, 15 lines of code this morning. I think I'd still qualify to call myself as a developer. Uh, but uh, uh, the fun fact is uh, I've been building HR tech applications since 2008-ish. Uh, then through a journey of building vendor management systems into marketplaces, uh, uh, you know, democratizing search engines, attempts, and several other attempts. But through the journey, um, also built a talent pool software recently um, and enjoyed the journey with some amazing industry people, fortunately, who worked along with me. But always it's fascinating how you go about every time you go in there. My, my goal and um, what, passion, what, what brings passion in me is like, how do you solve how to better connect with people, 
how to um, better enable people to find their jobs faster or how to enable companies to find candidates faster. All that mix uh, gets me excited and what software do I write next is always on my mind. And as you can think about, uh, I'm thinking always about how to write my next generative AI application now. But with that, uh, I want to pass on uh, the baton to Satish. Uh, if you could introduce yourself, that would be awesome. Thank you, Praneet. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Satish Kumar, co-founder and CEO of Glider AI. It is a skill intelligence platform for the full-time and extended workforce. Uh, and just to a little bit give idea, uh, I come from logistics background, education tech background, and now HR tech. So there is a correlation among all three still because I can truly map the logistics world to the, the talent um, uh, supply chain. Uh, similarly, the, the learning for me from education technology world, where I'm trying to understand individual students, I can map to the professional world. So the life has been preparing me to be in HR tech world in some fashion. Glad to be here. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Satish. Just a few few quick things, a little more detail. He's been modest. Satish has, is a serial entrepreneur. He built and sold the company which is fairly successful in assessment world. That's where he's like deep, knee deep in assessments. Uh, he is bringing all that years of experience assessment and applying to HR tech. That's how Glider was formed. And uh, uh, he's also, uh, uh, he, he's from UC Berkeley as an alumni and also from IIT Kanpur. That's his background. I, I wanted to- I should outsource it to you, Praneet. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time. Um, uh, John, why don't you go ahead? Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, depending on where you're, where in the world you are. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have known my fellow panelists for many, many, many years. And part of that is because I have, we're just going to put it out there over 25 years of experience in the industry. We don't need to give exact numbers because then of course we start to age ourselves. So <laughs> with, with 25 years of experience, as you can imagine, I started as a recruiter. I manned a desk. And at the time, you know, the the um, most innovative technology or, you know, assets that we have was the fax machine. So I've seen quite a lot happen in this industry as I've moved along my path and journey from being a recruiter, um, being the first internet recruiter back then in terms of, wow, there's this thing called the internet. We need to put jobs there instead of on the newspaper. Some of you on the call may not even know that that's how we did things back in the day or have ever had that experience, but that's exactly how we did things back in the day. Um, and then I've been, you know, moving along in my career path on the buyer and the supply side. So it's um, inclusive of leading global teams for the first global implementation for large MSPs, um, moving the path along in terms of developing processes and um, those types of innovative solutions all the way through to, you know, working on the buyer side. And, you know, people ask, well, how was that? I'm like, it was almost the exact same thing as being on the supply side because I was internally selling the program, why you want to do this, why you no longer really should pick up the phone to the local dweller, you know, well, well site leader and say, hey, I can actually give you a guy at this rate and pay those astronomical rates. So, and then of course, fast forward to where I'm most passionate about is our digital innovation and where we're going as an industry. I think we often talk the talk, but I really would like us to see where we walk the walk. And I know there was an earlier session that um, I participated in, and I think we're going to hear common themes in our session as well as we all have this, you know, wonderful conversation around how we can move forward with enablement of the staffing industry through technology, but we really need to really move that forward. And, you know, if uh, we're successful in 2024, we're going to see the percentage of organizations that are moving along in the path of AI and generative AI much further along and be more aggressive than we have in the past. So good to he be here and uh, excited about the conversation, Prini. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks a lot, John. Check. Brittany, thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to see, you know, uh, my esteemed colleague, jo Joanne, who I've known for many years, and Satish for several. It's good to be here with you guys. 
Uh, you know, and just like Joanne, I remember when the internet would break and we'd have to pull out the phone books when we were recruiting, right? That's the true story. I'm, most of you may not even know what a phone book is, but the reality is, you know, I've been a recruiter. I've been a staffing uh, business owner. I've worked as a internal program manager. I've been a network administrator as an IT contractor. Um, and I got into technology solutions and workforce solutions in the last 10 years. And, you know, talent pools, much like Praneet, that's how we met. Um, so I've seen I've seen the changes that are happening. And, and if, if, if I go back to 1999 when I was on Monster Board and I called that first Novell network admin and I was so excited that he worked with servers um, and I was hooked on recruitment, um, not much changes. If you really talk to a small staffing business owner, the way they operate, it may not be Monster but things have not changed. Though. We've seen linear changes in, in ATSs, small feature advances. We've seen VMSs from when we first adopted them in the early 2000s. They have not really changed that much either, if I'm being honest, in terms of application of use of, of workflow. But I think we're at a precipice of this conversation today. It's no longer going to be a linear change or a slight improvement. We're going to see quantum leaps. Um, in the way our business changes. So excited to have the conversation today and, and to be part of that change. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Chuck. I remember the day one I was trying to chase the VMS integrations. I, I got hold of Chuck a long time ago. And since then, we, you know, he's always been the good person when it comes to uh, testing out a disruptive idea and saying, does people really buy this? So oh, oh, thanks a lot for doing all this uh, through the years and especially in, uh, with the marketplaces and direct sourcing. Now, fun fact uh, is uh, when I have something to talk about astral and cosmical worlds, uh, the only one person I can actually call is Czech. <laughs> so if you want to reach out and learn more about that, definitely reach him out. Uh, he knows a lot more about meditation than I can imagine anybody else I know, know about personally. So with that, uh, let's kick this off. Um, so uh, I was I was thinking like you know from a, from a team point of view, if you if you divide the life cycle, especially in a, in a from an agency side of the business or the life cycle of a recruiting, there is uh, it starts always from the intent to hire. Uh, many of the times, uh, uh, the intent to hire is where it starts, followed by the sourcing, uh, followed by the screening, followed by the onboarding, enablement, engagement, all that part of it, right? So when it comes to intent to hire itself, um, I think we have seen so many examples in our industry uh, within the CRMs and ATSs you're already using, or you have gone through the journey of kind of taking an existing job description and say, can you please chat GPT rewrite this or open AI rewrite it so that it is written in a nice fashion. Uh, but uh, are we really capturing the intent of the hiring manager doing that? is still a really big question because that one particular item of not able to capture the real intent of a hiring manager using existing process, but just applying just Gen AI will impact the life cycle. Instead of just copying and pasting, now we are asking, hell copy, but paste to enable to rewrite or regenerate using a list of keywords. But many a times we don't know whether at least in the contract staffing industry or in the staffing side of the business, are we going to receive that rightly or wrong is one use case. I don't know um, uh, if any of you like uh, Joanne, Chuck, uh, you want to talk about like how you are seeing that can impact, uh, especially uh, you have been hands on with VMSs and customers. Chuck, I'm happy to go first if you would like. Yeah, I yeah. think Praneet, as you've given the example of the, the job description and the intent of a manager, I mean, it's very common to what we heard earlier in one of the sessions, you know, we're still working on the concept of a job, right? We really are thinking around what is it that you're trying to accomplish and what is the work that needs to be done to be able to move forward with what we've all been talking about for many years, finding the right talent in the way that which we should be finding that talent, the quality of that talent. And then, of course, we if you tack on the skills based hiring. Right. So I think, you know, the the job dis job description is table stakes right now. I think it's something that if you're not doing right now, you need to quickly look at the opportunity to use generative AI. And if I if I could just for a second, I love the title of this, right? Because generative AI 
Sure, that's where we are in the world of, you know, the innovation today. But AI in itself has been around for many, 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 many years, right? So every time I join a session or I listen to a webinar, I'm, I'm always intrigued about the level of conversation around the use of just saying AI, because AI has been around for years. VMSs have AI, right? You would search on the internet and that's a form of AI. Then you would want a um, run a search and that's a form of an AI. But generative is actually that we're generating work in a different way using the, the artificial intelligence. So kind of want to fast forward, but clarify AI is not new, right? It's, yep. it's we're here talking about generative AI. So job descriptions, I think are table stakes anymore. Um, I think if you're not, like I said before, I think it's something that you should be really thinking about. Matching, um, and you know, I'll go back to one of the earlier sessions with you know Doug Levy, my friend, of course, so for many years, where he said, you know, the ranking, that's somewhat of a problem if you're listing them, right? And, and where is that first um, lawsuit gonna come when we talk about using generative AI in this process? And I'm like, Thumbs up, Doug. I, I'm right there with you. Many of us who have been around since, you know, the 90s and Chuck, you did age yourself there. We remember it took one lawsuit where we all talked about what happened with the classification in Microsoft. Right. And it's just stumbled in and that snowball got bigger and bigger and bigger. So where is that first one that's going to come when we're using the generative AI in the staffing industry? So, you know, I'm a thumbs up of what he said. And, you know, is it going to be this year? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I think there's much more that we can be doing with AI. Matching, I think, is at a point where, you know, almost all technology does it. So, you know, what different, differentiates the algorithms, I think, is going to be really interesting to see how it um, kind of proceeds over, you know, the, the next couple of iterations of it. Um, I think we really need to think about each of the personas, right? So we've got a talent persona who is looking for a job and interesting enough um, I'm at a point right now, I'm considered a talent persona. So how am I being experienced in my, you know, talent experience? I think that's one thing we have to think about and how we can utilize efficient, compliant AI to make it a, a very seamless and easy experience for me. On the flip side, Praneeth, you talked about the hiring manager experience, right? So how can we use AI to, talk, to look at the hiring experience to make it easy for the hiring manager? Why do I have to go here, click the job title, then I have to go here and then make sure the job description, you know, those types of things. So how are we using Generative Vibe to improve upon that? Um, and then, of course, the supply base, right? People are not going to get the jobs only in the way in which they're going to find them themselves. There, of course, is going to be the supply base as well. So I think looking at, at the usage of gener generative AI, I think there's table stakes. I think it's going to continue to be used in a way in which it has to affect each of those personas. Obviously, the, clearly they overlap, but I think that's an interesting look at what we're going to be doing. And then, of course, I use the term compliant because, you know, there are many different legislation um, already existing right now around the usage of that. And, of course, PII. And I think we have to be very uh, aware of what is the proper use of AI before we actually see that first lawsuit come about. Yeah. Chuck, is there something you wanted to add on that one? No, I mean, I think you're pretty, pretty uh, thorough there. What I will say, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I've got a chance to, to take a new career in healthcare. I work with I Healthcare, which I'm in love with, uh, brilliant people and uh, amazing technology, uh, made me aware of other use cases. So our product, uh, you know, Polaris and FlexWise, so we could talk about where requisition architecture, which you're talking about, hey, how, how do I make sure we know all VMSs or most have terrible requisition architecture, which when you're thinking about skills matching, you're automatically ruined from the start. We've already missed up when we have a enrichment call. That's so that's the first problem. And I haven't seen great examples of requisition architecture implemented at scale, but that's the first thing. But I'll take it upstream even more. So our our FlexWise and Polaris products, they're actually measuring census on hospitals, right? And they're saying, hey, we know we're gonna have this need for our schedule. And we are building schedules based on you know happenings in the world using AI to make sure that so we're not even we're not even using people to to figure out what recs are we are that those are being generated for us. Um, and another example, another product that we recently acquired, Winnow, 
which is a talent pool for, for doctors, which first off can using AI can identify the whole talent pool um, and then make associations to say, hey, I know you worked with this guy and actually create really seamless experiences and, and familiarities in the sourcing process. So I think whether it's uh, whether it's demand creation or um, talent identification, uh, there's there's so many interesting and powerful uses today. Awesome, awesome. Satish, I think I wanted to nudge that a little bit and go to the next question, the next topic there. And it, um, from the requirements point of view, given you're so knee deep in assessments, um, my assumption would be like, based on what is the criteria of the need, you would need to have uh, how to vet the particular candidate through the assessment pool. Uh, if that source of what you're trying to hire is not clear, uh, would you? How would you see uh, that impacting assessments? Absolutely. So, um, as rightly said, if the source of what need to be evaluated is not correct, it's garbage in, garbage out, right? So, it's in, extremely important to have skills identified that is relevant for the job for which you plan to hire. And I just heard from Joanna that because it being a multi-party system especially in the contingent market where you know you hear something from the uh, hiring manager then, then then there is msp in the middle and then it comes to the supplier who are actually going to bring the candidate mm -hmm. and there is lost in translation among these three players as well so yes that is very critical so and getting the source of data and really extracting what is needed from that job requisition or even the recording of the hiring manager session right um that could be used to identify what are the relevant skills, uh, but then also what are the associated skills that might not be spoken out explicitly in the call or missed from the job description. So the, the, there are ways to create the real ask. And then uh, through generative AI, now we can actually launch and build the right kind of questionnaire around that in the assessment. And, and, and the whole process end to end uh, uh, can be used to augment a bit as well what was missing a skill to be called out in the beginning. Absolutely. Like you said, I think I'm going to close that topic with ending saying that I think someone will come very soon this month or already out there building where they actually are going to come to say, hey, let me talk to the hiring manager as an AI and I'm a knowledge worker, which is fed with almost all the internet and also your enterprise knowledge, if it was a private instance, and interview the hiring manager more cle clearly to drive that derive that intent of hiring so that can be fed into the open use case, which we all have seen of generation of job description. But the feed into that is generated from the conversation which this AI is actually talking to and i'm pretty sure somebody's building that already uh, so with that um, i want to move this, this to the next topic the most important one once we all get the requirements in our industry what do we do is uh, and i are speaking to so many staffing owners and every time i speak to them like from a sourcing point of what is the bigger problem they said time like we do not have more than 45 minutes from the requisition hits our inbox to actually wait we don't like to wait. If you wait, we lost it already. Because within the next 45 minutes, you have to post the job, you have to uh, search for the candidates, you have to do a set of reach outs because all of us have the same set of tools. We all know the obvious culprits of the databases we all go after. While we all pool the databases, we all know that databases have been pulled from the same databases which are already out there. So everybody has existing to uh, access to same information. So the speed to it is and the sourcing is like super important. So with that, I, I want to throw this around. Uh, you know, I know Czech, you already been in your personal journey. You built a staffing company, been a recruiter, uh, then you went to the VMS side, then into the whole journey of talent pooling. How would you see that sourcing uh, uh, function getting really impacted? Are there any tools that you have come across uh, which has blown up your mind or saying, hey, this is where it is slowly going to and what would a recruiter's life or an agency life look like when they're sitting in front of them uh, and saying, what is going to change for them today? Great question. Thank you. Well, first off, let's be honest, uh, VMS and, and these programs that have created the need for speed, right? 
um, at the at speed and cost have been the main drivers since 2001. And I'm just going to say it, right? What has that done to the buyers in terms of the talent and the quality they see? Because this process is this mousetrap that is not paying attention to quality um, and to, to maybe to their ignorance. So, so I'd say first off, your point being there's the, 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 the workflow is broken. And my goal, my hope is that AI can change the way we look at the workflow, right? Can we turn the workflow on its head? Um, can we can we start looking at different metrics? So, uh, to your to your point, how does sourcing? How does this affect sourcing? And I was telling you about our window product. I'm not here to sell our products, but I'm so fascinated by the fact that we can look at the data from doctors that put in claims and understand the whole talent pool, right? Um, so I can understand that. And just to give you guys a, an abstract example. And then I can see where they've worked. And then I can make, AI can make associations and say, oh, you know, Praneeth worked with Satish 10 years ago at this company. And then, so immediately before I'm doing outreach to a candidate, I'm aware of who they are, where they went to school, who they may have spent time with in school. And, and through, through AI, I'm allowed to, I'm, I have the intelligence to have a quality outreach that returns me a higher percentage. So I think, all AI is awareness. It gives us structured data that we can make decisions off of, better decisions. Now, how we use that, how we consume that is another thing. But I think we have no awareness. Like I said, things haven't changed since 1999 that much. I'm calling somebody. I've got to get him. I've got to get him 15 seconds earlier. If I don't, that's my measure of if I'm good or not. Right. That's it. Did I get there? Like, that's terrible. So. So I think that's what I think that's what AI does for us. It makes us aware, and once we're aware, now uh, how can we improve our delivery? I do think you know, um, you know the like you said, Brittany. You know, every, we all have similar problems looking at the staffing side of the business, right? In terms of getting that to that candidate to make sure that they're available and where they are in their workflow, et cetera, and be that person that submits that candidate because they're the right one quality, et cetera. I do think that there are technologies out there that can be adopted where they are sourcing and engaging based upon what we know of that talent. And that's where generative AI is helping. Right. You know, you know, and whether it's find them or hire easy or, you know, seek out, you know, you find them out in the web if you don't already have them in your ATS or your database. And there are triggers that through generative AI can actually know, oh, I know where this person is in their you know, career path or their level of interest automatically reach out to them that way. And there was a comment on an earlier panel around let's have the recruiter walk in and see the list. I'm like, that's available. That's available today. And the winning organization around getting, getting that job filled first, getting that talent a job is the ones that are going to be able to adopt those quickly, quickly. And unfortunately in our industry, it is a large change management effort. It truly is. And Chuck, you referenced that we're still doing the same things we did in you know, 2001. But, you know, it's time for us to step up and actually make some changes with how we're doing things. Um, and, you know, I'm if I flip it around on the talent side as well, again, because I consider myself a talent right now. Remember when you thought, well, I'm going to apply for this job and it just goes into a black hole. You know, even as a staffing supplier, I submitted this candidate and nothing happens. Well, using generative AI and just AI in general, it can improve the talent experience to automatically know where in the process, you know, either through, you know, where the hiring manager is or where the sourcer is, where the recruiter is or where, you know, the interviewers are. It can at least have a level of engagement that allows for a better experience of the talent. And I, I think we need to really think about, um, you know, yes, the client is important, but the talent is important as well. And we have the opti opt optimal time right now to use generative AI and make it a better experience for everyone. Absolutely. And just to add to a list of additional tools there, um, yes, uh, seek out, find them, HireEasy being amazing database of uh, data aggregators who has matured their function so deep right now uh, that you don't even have to come up with how, what email should I send, which is much more personalized. The campaign is 
one click away generate and go you don't even have to think through that unless you really wanted to create something hands on and all that can be scheduled so that in the morning you wake up and see you already have applicants lying in your inbox who are already screened to go forward Another thing, I've, uh, I had an opportunity to talk to one person uh, recently, Shane Gray, who comes from the core HR tech industry in the past, who has built ATS solutions and he's on Talent Tech Code. He's building a new company called Glide Talent. And I was, I was amazed by the vision of what they're building with Generative AI First Asset, where not only that they want to enable a recruiting organization just for the sourcing of it, but when you want to post a job to a particular site, you still have to think as a recruiter today, how much budget do I allocate to post a job? Do I have the budget which is given to me? Is there a slot? Because you only have limited slots. So have I posted the slots enough of the, because a group of recruiters already use the slots? Somebody has to remove a slot to put it. How do you do this efficiently? using the key terminology I want to use from the previous session, winnability, because you want to win the deals, more number of deals that you can uh, uh, in all the parameters we are working on with the budget which is given, with the tools you're given. And I think that's where the vision I'm seeing is as such, there are so many new generation platforms coming to life, which are taking from job distribution, optimized job distribution based on the cost optimization of your total goals as a company screening enablement reach out everything from a, uh, from 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 the sourcing point of view one key thing is like we have seen companies like converse ai uh, in the industry already who has championed around for a few years enabling recruiting companies to go ahead and do reach outs part of it which has been a functional which we do because i was looking at a um, stat recently and a report where it said about 65% of people don't pick up phone calls, which you don't know, which is, and you get a higher percentage of pickup rate if you use a local number. Uh, I remember in my previous company, my sales team asked for this tool called Kixi, which actually lets you use in sales. So it's, it will actually show you a local number, although it's not a local number uh, from which the uh, salesperson is calling from. And I think those techniques will also increase through this generative AI, which you don't even have to think about these things because it knows intelligently enough this industry has been groomed in, in, in doing that. So, so I mean, uh, I'm super excited about these techniques of how sourcing becomes faster and easier and reach outs enablement, whether it's email, SMS, or even a phone call. And uh, there are so many other companies, like I came across the other company called Babel Bots, uh, mm. who was doing an amazing job. And uh, Qualify is another company. Scotty AI is another company. All these companies are enabling recruiting industry to outsource a set of tasks to do that while the data providers are creating deeper intelligence to enable where you don't even have to come up with the Boolean string logic anymore because it's been generated on the fly. So all, all these are coming to reducing. I think from, from that note, I think sourcing is going to be in my head the most uh, impactful thing where recruiters and recruiting agencies probably when they look for this new age of tools or existing tools upgrading they'll probably have to spend very less time uh, uh, in in terms of the same reach out and qualifying of a candidate with that i want to push to the next most important part while you reach thousands of people who may or may not respond or qualify what is the best way to qualify because of the like the the problem of uh, quality you just mentioned starting off uh, uh, you know check how do we qualify them better at, at, this, at the level where we can really qualify them because you can't just come up with hey what questions do i ask this particular candidate with this particular regime and these skills for this particular role we probably cannot come up with that on the fly as humans and um, i want to throw this out to satish because he's so knee deep in assessments uh, on how he's seeing generative ai transform especially the quality of and speed around uh, the qualification of candidates and screening. Absolutely. So as I was listening to you guys, I couldn't help but think about this point that a lot of traditional steps of hiring have been blurred in this generative AI because, you know, we just said uh, uh, sourcing, outreach, engagement, vetting. But if we really see all four are, four are merged in a single category because the moment uh, you outreach first touch point, uh, you are vetting the candidate already because you parse the resume, analyze against the job match, you are a pre-filtered yeah. and vetted candidate already, right? Um, 
But so I'm not going to talk about those implicit uh, vetting. Let's talk about explicit vetting, you know, which you, you mentioned assessment. Uh, it could be through assessment or chatbot or, you know, one way video or could be live interview. These are explicit steps where we really want to understand from the candidate uh, uh, how capable they are to be able to do the job. And um, to, Today, if we we ourselves in at Glider have embedded so much Gen AI in each of those product lines to really make it easier uh, uh, to first of all come up with the right question, but then also automatically evaluate. For example, for the chatbot you mentioned, you know, it could be either audio, text, or video kind of engagement with the candidate, and at the end of it, you can actually auto summarize what transpired and have a recommendation of that. Right? It's not just now we have to go and watch everything again with that, that really kills the purpose. When it comes to assessment, absolutely we can custom build a custom assessment based on the input of what the skills are needed and really have it uh, delivered to the candidate at a scale. Uh, and at the end of it, what you get is a nice uh, uh, looking report where hiring managers are confident that this is the right candidate and not waste my time in the interview process, right? Uh, and I will, it will be a miss if I do not mention all kind of fraudulent activity that happens in the, in these uh, in these assessment. And you know what? Most of the earliest stages of the uh, vetting is remote now, right? Uh, even only, only at advanced stage, they will call to interview the candidate in person. Hence, it is a lot more important to be cognizant of what trans what transpires in the remote assessment process, right? So uh, at least we have evolved a lot over last you know, two year period, uh, very deep, sophisticated proctoring uh, through video, audio stream. Uh, 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 we analyze click stream to really verify the genuineness of the candidate and nobody is helping, you know? Uh, but you know what, I'll take a different stand as well. If the world is going to use chat GPT for workforce, we might as well test the candidate about how resourceful the candidate is in using chat GPT during the work. Right? So while it was a taboo in the past that, hey, do not go seek out external resources and you know uh, it is considered fraud, but really uh, we the way I took look, look at it that there should be two segments in the evaluation. One should be like, okay, you showcase your, your um, your aptitude and analytical ability, do not use any resources. But then another segment, please go ahead, you show me how resourceful you are, you are to solve the problem. Because that is what the world workforce is going to be. Uh, and then uh, I will go and summarize a little bit about one-way video and live interview as well, where um, once you know that here is the resume of the candidate, here is the job description, system can guide the interviewer what question to ask as well. And that will bring standardization across all interviewer for a job role, because that has been challenged as well, right? How do you make sure that they're asking the right question, unbiased mm -hmm. question, right? And and engaging with the candidate as well, because sometimes you, you just don't get the right experience with the candidate because the kind of question, the way you ask the, the, that question, right? It will alienate the candidate. So all these experience can be captured, guided by Gen AI in the live interview product as well. And not to mention again, fraudulent activity happens in live interview as well lip syncing impersonation right now technology is so advanced that all those are captured in glider platform to have a peace of mind that the vetting process was done correctly and you have a right reflection of the uh the candidate competency that is relevant to do the job and satish i love that you you were talking about generative AI and asking the right interview question, because the question, you know, if Chuck and I are applying for a job, we clearly have similar, but still very different experience, right? I don't want a question asked of myself that it's clear in my bio or, you know, my profile that you're asking Chuck because it's not clear in his, right? A question should be asked for me, that is specific to what you know of me versus what question you're asked of Chuck because of what you know of Chuck. And that's what generative AI can do, right? Not be very specific around the types of questions that you're, you're asking. On the flip side, on the talent side, right? Generative AI, I can use that to say, well, this is the, the job that I want to 
apply for, help me prepare for the application and the interview process based on my experience versus a job somewhere else that is very differently. And that's the value of generative AI. It's not a one for one or apples to apples. It clearly is very specific to the scenario. So I love that you use that as an example. Awesome. Context everything. Context everything. So I think we have like in the last five minutes, uh, I've already announced, I think there's a button which says uh, the Q&A is open. So uh, we'll watch for any questions to come in uh, and as as through that. But I also want to throw in some some uh, some some tools here, like you know, a couple of things I came across in my research just recently is like there's a company called Kula for sourcing, uh, which is very similar to the existing tools like Find Them, Seek Out, Hire Easy, uh, which seems to be pretty newer uh, in nature, but also probably easy to use is what I found. Uh, there's also like new one called Hive hunt.ai just a disclaimer i did not use it but uh, from the marketing messaging that i've read before i use it sounds very outstanding that it can automate the sourcing function um and then uh, uh the the other part is like i also have seen a few others like if you guys wanted to see what is the power of generative ai applied to uh, outreach uh, check out a company called bland.ai uh, B L A N D dot A I, um, and you know, if you have the last two minutes, uh, we'll do a real test of what generative AI in our world looks like. Uh, but I don't think we have time for that. But you know, uh, let's take uh, uh, for the first question here. So it's from Hiren Patel, uh, indicating how do how to measure ROI on using multiple AI tools for prospecting and con conversations. Uh, anybody can take it. I think that's a good one for you, Praneet. <laughs> All right. So um, I, I think that the challenge uh, in the ROI won't be immediate uh, uh, as available. The way we would do it is like, you know, in my world of product enablement, I always create what is called as a pilot met, uh, projects where it has a very clear goals and matrices from the, if I'm putting $2 extra or $10 extra into a life cycle of my tool from a sourcing or from screening, from a reach out or enablement, did I increase my placements rate? That is what we all live for uh, uh, in, in theory. Uh, did I increase my show up rate? Because many a times we also have the non showing up or even after the hiring. Did I increase my talent uh, uh, engagement rate, which is uh, engagement and the cost of hire or the cost of an applicant level? You would probably want to uh, uh, bring each of those back. Uh, in the metrics and clearly measure when you're implementing these tools because you will be bombarded with hundreds of tools for the next 12, 24, 56 months. There'll be thousands of companies yes. who will be born out of this and you will love using them, but pilot it out because there's a lot of quality issues in generative AI. It is just kicking off the ground. Um, Somebody says, Jason, I didn't catch the name of the guy you recommended for sales. Uh, sales, Ample Market, I think. <laughs> the starting of the call, Ample Market uh, by itself. Um, any other questions? A any other closing thoughts? I'm excited where this will go. I just hope the industry actually can make a little bit more of a progressive move forward because the time could not be more perfect for it. So, a Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. No, I'll take it further and say, hey, if you don't apply these tools, before it was a luxury, uh, if you don't apply AI now as a staffing business owner, you're dead in the water in, in, in 18 months. I promise you that. Satish? I concur. I concur. You know, I, I, I work with so many staffing companies, and uh, I still see that their muscle memory is holding them back. I don't think that's an option now. Yeah, there you go. It's not an option. Uh, it's It's... It's current now. It's not a buzzword. The companies, uh, the only caution of advice I have as a developer and a product developer, please vet them in detail. Don't buy the marketing pitch. Uh, vet everybody for detail. Put it into a pilot project. Negotiate such that you can actually safeguard your business without impacting your existing line. Apply that for one job, two jobs, 10 jobs. But also if you just measure if your candidates is getting impacted through the process, Yes. Be a candidate after it goes live. Go on the other side and experience. Because, and do it randomly because when you're doing it for a day zero, it's fine because there's no volume. Do it 
again and hundredth day if it falls off because the world of APIs and generative AI is not mature to actually scale. That's the reality. It's great being with you guys. Thanks, awesome. Pranay. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank uh, you, guys. Thanks, Jack, Satish, really appreciate always your time and doing this. Hopefully, the audience uh, uh, had some, uh, you know, two cents of output from this. That was the goal. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Pranay.